When you come to the Canada Aviation and Space Museum, you can see hundreds of pieces of history, but there's one that you cannot miss. And look who it is, it's Aaron Gregory with the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Dave. So what are we standing in front of? We're standing in front of the very first Canada Arm. The very first Canada Arm. That's so when right. did this go into space? It went into space for the first time in 1981. Right. And retired in 2011, 30 and, years. And how many times did it go into space? It went to space 23 times. It traveled 153 million kilometers. Wow. Yeah. Can we touch it? No. <laughs> well, why not? It went into space. Well, of course, but people, you know, picking at it and tearing the blankets and the wires, you know, we don't have maintenance crews for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is basically handmade. That's right. Yeah. It was built over the course of the 70s and first went to space in the early 80s and had a very long, illustrious career. Now, how many parts are there to the cannon arm? There's a few parts. So the first part is the shoulder. The shoulder. You have the upper boom. Right. The elbow. It really is an arm. It really is an arm. The lower boom. Yeah. Uh, the wrist joint. Yeah. And the end effector. So which end is this? This is the end effector. Okay. So this the is end the effector hand. essentially is the hand. Yes. So on the face of it, you'll see a wire snare device, yeah. and that's what it uses to grip. So it lines up with a special grapple fixture and connects right. and then grabs on. So it can do soft docking, it can hold things stationary. Uh, it's actually quite dexterous for, for what it looks like. Because it doesn't look like there's any fingers No, it on doesn't it. at all, but that's the, that's the design of the grapple feature. Now when the Space Shuttle Columbia blew up, the role of the Canada Arm changed. It's true. Uh, Columbia had some shuttle tile damage right. and upon re-entry that caused an explosion and disintegration of the shuttle and the loss of the entire crew. Right. Uh, so this was a great tragedy obviously that NASA wanted to avoid in any future shuttle missions yep. and basically the, an inspection boom was built to go on the end of the Canada arm to extend its reach. Okay. There was a, a camera system put on the end of that inspection boom that was developed by a, a company out in Canada called Neptech. Yes, a great company. Yeah. Yeah, so laser, laser camera system, or LCS, and that basically took um, 3D scans, surface scans. So of the arm was now long enough that it could see. Yeah, right under, curl right underneath and scan the whole belly, and then the other hard to reach areas that right. uh, that other cameras couldn't uh, couldn't detect any damage. And then what would they do with the scans? They would send the information back to Earth, where 3D prints were created. Uh, the 3D prints were sent to NASA as well, and so they would. So these 3D prints were made in Ottawa. Yeah, and sent to sent to NASA, and then NASA would examine the damage and decide. Uh, whether or not a spacewalk was going to be required for to repair the tile, or if the damage you know was was deemed to be, you know, not significant enough to prevent re-entry or to cause you know cause any other disasters on re-entry. So other than the Canada Arm, what else is there to see here? Well, we have lots of great stuff at the museum. Currently, we have Chris Hadfield's Sokol suit on right. display, and we also have his our Sokol suit? his Sokol suit. So it's the one he wore in space? That's right, to and from the space station aboard the Soyuz. Cool. Mm -hmm. And what else is there? And we have the Life in Orbit exhibition if you're interested in learning more about the International Space Station. Aaron Gregory from the Canada Aviation and Space Museum, thank you for the tour. Thank you for coming.